So yeah, apologies in advance. I'm not really entirely sure what this video is. I'm still learning how to make and edit videos, building up my setup as I go along. Um, and I kind of had multiple, uh, multiple goals with this. I wanted to try and explain a bit of electronics, try and give an intuitive explanation of how op amps work. Um, I also wanted to uh, show off the circuit design that I came up with and demonstrate that designing a circuit is not rocket science when you've got schematics and data sheets at hand um, and demonstrate the thing audially. So yeah, apologize if it comes across as uh, a bit of a mixed bag, but uh, here we go. Moog's Workstat 01 is a fantastic little monosynth, but its VCO direct output goes between 0 and 5 volts, its VCF direct output goes between plus and minus 2 volts, its main output only goes between plus and minus 1.5 volts, whereas for Eurorack, what we want for an audio level signal is all the way between plus 5 and minus 5 volts. An op-amp is a device that takes two voltage inputs and outputs the difference between them multiplied by an arbitrarily large number. Now, because sadly they're not actually magic, you also need to supply power input. So, if we connect the inverting input to 0 volts and the non-inverting input to 1 volt, it will output close to 12 volts, because the difference between the two is 1 volt multiplied by a large number capped at the device's capabilities will output close to the positive power rail. For most real-world applications, simply having the amplifier's output swing between its highest and lowest values is not very useful, but by feeding the amplifier's output back to the inverting input, you instead create a device that wants to stabilise when the output equals the input. Remember that the amplifier's output is the difference between the two input terminals amplified by a large amount, and by adding this feedback loop, as the amplifier's output approaches 1 volt, the difference between the two inputs approaches 0, the amplifier has no signal to amplify, and it stabilises. This process happens incredibly quickly, and you end up with a device where the output voltage follows whatever signal you're applying to the non-inverting input. By putting a voltage divider inside the feedback loop, only a portion of the output voltage gets fed back to the inverting input so the output voltage has to climb higher than the input voltage on the non-inverting input before the amplifier will stabilise. Specifically, the amplifier's gain ends up being 1 plus the ratio between the feedback resistor and the ground resistor. If we use a feedback resistor that's twice as large as our ground resistor, we get an amplifier with gain 3. Our non-inverting input, V in plus, is fixed at 1 volt. Because only a fraction of V out is being fed back to the inverting input, V in minus, by the time V in minus hits 1 volt and the amplifier stabilises, the actual value of V out is all the way up at 3 volts. Feed 0 volts to the non-inverting input and the input signal to the inverting input and interesting things start to happen. Because the op-amp subtracts the inverting input from the non-inverting input and the non-inverting input is fixed at 0, an op-amp laid out like this will flip the phase of its input. Also, remembering that an op-amp amplifies the difference between its inputs, and one of these inputs is fixed at zero, the stable point of this configuration is when V in minus equals zero. And for V in minus to be zero, the portion of the flipped output signal that travels the feedback path must be exactly opposite to the input signal, creating a junction where they add up to zero. This junction is therefore known as a virtual ground. 
The gain of an amplifier like this will depend on the ratio between the feedback resistor and the input resistor. And thanks to the virtual ground, where all incoming signals add up to zero, you can keep adding more and more inputs with their own input resistors to contribute to the overall output. The signals won't interfere with each other because what is there to feed back? The virtual ground is zero. A configuration like this is a common way to make a simple mixer. The final configuration is known as a summing inverting amplifier. Another benefit of this layout is you can easily create a high-pass filter on the input just by adding a single capacitor. This is key to how we will re-center the Workstats VCO around zero to make it easier to mix with other Eurorack audio signals. If you remember, the Workstats VCO oscillates between zero and five volts. If you think of that as an AC signal going between plus and minus 2.5 volts, plus a 2.5 volt static offset, you can use a high pass filter to filter out the 0Hz DC offset, leaving you with a signal centred around 0. Using a single TL074 chip which contains 4 op amps, and designing around the summing inverting amplifier architecture, I want to be able to mix together the Workstats built-in VCO, an external Eurorack signal, and the Workstat's own VCF output fed back into itself. To enable clean mixing, all three signals will be centred around zero and converted to consistent voltage levels. I'll then run that mix through a second inverting amplifier, which will both correct the phase inversion and allow me to experiment with overdriving the signal. This mixed amplified output is intended to go straight into the VCF audio in jack on the Workstat.
So here's the final circuit broken down into five blocks for legibility. Down in the left here we've got the power input with our 10 pin power connector, a couple of diodes for reverse power protection, a couple of 10 ohm resistors that will act as slow burn fuses if there's a short circuit anywhere, and a couple of large and small capacitors to filter out any peaks and troughs or high frequency noise on the power supply. And then finally we use the plus and minus 12 volt rails to power the TL074 chip containing our four op amps, with another pair of power filtering caps close to the supply pins as suggested in the datasheet. Up in the top left here we've got the unit's main functionality, with here being the main summing inverting amplifier, with a 34k feedback resistor. This lets us mix between the Workstats direct VCO out, with unity gain and a filtering capacitor for AC coupling, an external Eurorack signal with a gain of 0.5, the resistor being twice as big because the voltage level comes in twice as high as the Workstats built-in VCO, and again a filtering capacitor just to recenter around zero, and a third input with unity gain intended for feeding back the Workstats VCF direct out. This one doesn't have a filtering capacitor, as looking at the Workstat schematic, it actually goes through a high-pass filter just before hitting the VCF output jack inside the Workstat itself. And of course, all three of those signals go through potentiometers to allow us to control the volume level. In the middle here we have volume control for the final mix, and then we have a second inverting amplifier to correct the inverted phase, this time with a gain of 2 to allow me to experiment with overdriving signals going into the filter. Now, even though the TL074 datasheet says that the chip has output short circuit protection built in, I added these two protection resistors. R10 to protect against the momentary short circuits you get when plugging in jacks to jack sockets, and R7 with the intention of preventing a short circuit when the main mix volume is turned all the way to zero. But actually, thinking about it again now, I don't think that one's necessary, because the only way that signal is going to get to ground is through the full 100k of the potentiometer. Now 34k isn't a very common resistor value. I bought a bunch of 34k precision resistors specifically for this project, but if you want to swap them out for something else, the exact resistor values don't matter as much as making sure that you maintain the ratio between the feedback resistor value and the input resistor values. Also, if you swap out R3 and R4, make sure you also recalculate C7 and C8 because you only want these high pass filters to have cutoff points down in the low single hertz. You don't actually want to filter out any audible frequencies, just very low frequencies that constitute static DC offsets. Make sure you stick with resistors in the kilo ohm range. In the middle here we've got a simple non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1.68 and a high pass filter for AC coupling that can take the Workstats direct VCO or VCF output up to modular signal levels. And for our fourth and final op amp we've got another non-inverting amplifier, this time with a gain of 3 to bring the Workstats final audio out up to modular signal levels. This one shouldn't strictly speaking need the high pass filter, but I'm sure I've seen weird DC offset issues on the Workstats final out when I've looked at the waveforms in the past. So here it is. Apologies for all the identical red cables, but I've got the Workstats VCO going in here with a pulse wave. I've got a, uh, a sawtooth wave coming out of the instro oscillator there, going on this uh, into this middle input. And I've got the filter direct out fed back into the third input there. Um, and I'm also using the, the main out booster to, to take the final audio into my rack. So I'm using the envelope and VCA built into the workstat itself there. So let's just give the individual component parts a quick listen. I've got the workstats filter all the way open, everything's turned down except just the pulse wave input from the workstat itself.
Let's have a quick listen to the sawtooth coming out of the instro. So now let's hear those two mixed together with no filter feedback yet. But what about the main point of this build, the filter feedback? So as you can hear, that really adds a lot of character. It's like giving the thing a built-in distortion pedal, but it can also overwhelm the filter entirely. There seems to be a large range of um, interplay between the main mix volume, the resonance on the Workstats filter itself, um, because that cuts out some of the low end in the feedback, which can which can stop that filter from overloading as early. Um, yeah, the the sweet spot seems to be about um, so the sweet spot seems to be about nine o'clock on the resonance knob. Lets you go all the way open on filter feedback and mix volume without overloading the filter. So yeah, overall I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, I used various combinations of that in generating the little background track you've been hearing throughout this video. Um, I did also test it out with my other filters. Uh, the Wasp with feedback just, just does not behave nicely at all. Um, state variable filter I've got in the far right of the grey case, the, um, the WMD Carbon. That kind of works but overloads again very quickly um the the other one that did work very well was the vcf from the erica synths diy edu line um that also that also feeds back and fattens up waves quite nicely so maybe it's something to do with ladder filters because i'm pretty sure in the works that we've got a transistor ladder and in the and in the um, Erica, the Erica VCF, maybe a diode ladder. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, I think ladder filters overload quite nicely, and other types of filter maybe not so much. But yeah, there we go. Hope this video wasn't uh, too scattershot. But yeah, if you've got a workstat and a Eurorack rig, I highly, highly recommend building something like this.